Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over linear search and the different functions in Python that use linear search. So to begin, I want you to analyze this function we have here. So we have some print statements. I want you to tell me what will be the result when we print these three function calls and what is the runtime of this function. All right, so give it a moment and think about it. All right, so let's run a program. And you can see we have true, true, false. And this function is actually very simple. Basically, you're given a list and a target and you return true if the target is in the list. Otherwise, you return false. So 20 and 99 are both in this list, but 1000 is not. So what is the runtime of this function? And a lot of beginners, when they see an if condition statement, they just think that, oh, it's an if condition and not a for loop. Therefore, it is all of one constant because we just have a Boolean here, right? Well, actually, first we can simplify this function. This if target and list already returns a Boolean, so we actually don't need this part. And we can just return target and list. So if I save and run the program, we can see we get true, true, false. So the runtime of this is actually not constant, but linear. This is linear search, because if you think about it, how do you know if the target is in the list unless you go through the entire list, right? So if I'm looking for 20, I have to look through the entire list. In this case, 20 is over here. But the worst case, the number is not inside the list. So if I want to make sure 1000 is not in the list, I have to do a comparison at each index to make sure that number is not 1000. Therefore, this is linear search. Basically, it is linear to the input size. So if I have 100 numbers, I will have to make 100 comparisons. And if I have a million numbers, I will have to make a million comparisons. So this may look short, but actually behind the scene, there's a lot more code that goes into this operator. So basically what is happening when you do target and list, you're iterating through the list. So for val in list, if val is equal to target, return true. Otherwise, you return false. So this is what the code would look like if you are using the in operator to check to see if a value is inside a list. So if I just copy and paste this, and replace each one and run the program, we should get the same values, true, true, false. So yeah, that's linear search. And what are some other functions that use linear search? So I'm going to comment this out. An example of a function that uses linear search is the min function. And another example would be the max function. So again, these two functions, they look very short, but actually there's a lot of code that goes behind the function and there's a linear search, right? How do you know what the minimum value is unless you go through every single value in the list? The same goes for maximum. All right, so let's implement the two functions and it'll be very simple. So the first one I will call get min and it will take in a list and I'm going to create a variable called cur min and just initialize it to none. And I'm initializing cur min to none because we might have an edge case where the user passes in an empty list. So if there are no values in the list, then we will return none. So here I'm going to iterate through the list for val in list if cur min is none. I'm going to assign min the value. So min is equal to val. Elif min is greater than val, then we are going to update min to be val. So here you can see we have two conditions that do the exact same thing. And that is because the first one is the case where we are looking at the first number in the list. So min is none. So when we look at the first number, min is none, we set it to val. Otherwise, if we don't hit this case, this means that min already has a number and is not none. 
then we do a comparison. So if Kermin is greater than Vau, we want Kermin to take the smaller number. So that's why we update it here. And in programming, there's something called short circuiting because inside both if condition statements, we have the same action, right? So I can just copy and paste this and put or here and I can get rid of this. So what is happening is if this evaluates to true, then with this or statement, this part would not get evaluated. So you wouldn't get the error where you're comparing none to a number. And then here I can just return cur min. So over here, let's change this to get min. So it will call our function. And if I run our program, you can see the min is 11. And let's do the same for get max. So it's going to be pretty much the same thing, except you flip this comparison operator. So again, cur max will be none for vow in list. If cur max is none or cur max is less than vow, we update cur max to be vow. And then here we return cur max. All right, so over here, I'm going to change this to get max. So it's going to call our function that we defined here. And I'm going to run our program. And you can see we have 1199. Okay. So min and max are two functions that use linear search. And we also have a third function that I want to show you, and that is the count function. So here I'm just going to add a few more values. So let's do 20 and 99, 99, 99. So here I added two print statements that use the count method from the list. And basically what the function does is it counts the number of times this value appears in the list. So if I run this program, we should get two 20s in this list and four 99s. And here you can see we have two and four. And of course, you can see why this would be a linear search. And that is, how do you know how many 20s or 99s there are? And the only way to know is if you've gone through every single number in the list and counted how many times the number appears. So let's implement that function really quickly. So over here, I'm going to create a function called get count. And it's going to take in a list and a target. In this case, this is a method, so we don't have to pass in the list because this is a function inside the list object. But here we are creating a function, so we need to pass in the list and the target value. So I'm going to create a variable called count and set it to zero. And then I'm going to iterate through the list. So it's going to be a linear search. So for val in list, if val is equal to target, count plus equal one. And then here I just returned count. And likewise, I'm going to replace this list.count with get count, and I'm going to pass in the list. Same for over here. And let's run our program. And as you can see, we have two and four, okay? And another thing I want to show you is we can actually simplify this as well. So here you can see count would be plus equal one. If we had an else statement here, it would be the same as saying count plus equal zero, right? And this Boolean evaluates to true and false, and you can convert the Boolean to an integer. So true would be one and false would be zero. So what I can actually do here is get rid of this and take this condition, get rid of the if statement, move that back and change this to count plus equal vow equal equal target. So this is going to return true or false. If it's true, it'll be one. And if it's false, it'll be zero. So it's going to convert the Boolean to an integer since we are adding to an integer. So if I save and run a program, you can see we get two and four. Okay. All right, so that's it for linear search. Hopefully you understand how linear search works, what is the runtime, and what are some of the functions in Python that use linear search, okay? And in this case, the list is not sorted, so we have no choice but to go through every single value. But actually, if the list were sorted, we can use another algorithm that would improve the runtime of searching. 
and it would also improve the runtime of min and max. So for instance, if the list were sorted, getting the minimum number and maximum number would be constant because the minimum would be the first number and the maximum would be the last number. However, there are certain functions that would remain the same. For instance, getting the count, it doesn't matter if the list is sorted, you would still have to do a linear search to check for the number of instances for a target value. Okay, so yeah, that's linear search. And in the next few videos, we will go over some more searching algorithms such as binary search and jump search. All right, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.